Alright guys, thanks for tuning in to iCup TV. You'll be here, Epic and Awesome Caster and host Fitz here. We have Amir here with us again. It's good to be here. And it's going to be, uh, uh, this replay comes to us from iCup Clan League Season 20, week number 3 between Black Dragons and Overdosed and competing for Black Dragons. Spawning in the top right will be the Orange uh, Terran uh, in Series number 5. It will be uh, Black Dragons Topaz. And spawning in the bottom left, it will be Overdosed's Wallace here now. If you guys recall from last game, Wallace did ultimately lose this game because he did not know about the 12 o'clock expansion on match point that Topaz did acquire. It just goes to show you that ignorance is not bliss. If you don't know what your enemy has against you, then how can you possibly defeat him? Yes, exactly, and that's what... You know, you know, it's actually kind of interesting to have uh, Amir here. I mean, it's nice to, I, I think, uh, you know, in a way to have... From a traditional uh, brood war caster, is that instead of having in-game analysis, you kind of have more general tactical analysis. Well, yes, I mean I have studied much, you know, combat history, so I get a much more general view of things, and it's remarkable how much actual combat relates to brood war. Yeah. I mean, maybe not in, you know, you so you set up a base and yeah. then you require resources. Maybe not like that, but you know, you got to know. What Basic you premise know. of combat, yeah. So it's, it's interesting when you when you apply those to the actual game, but. Getting to the actual game itself, it looks like yeah, maybe an aggression coming out of out of Protoss. I don't I, I, I I'm interested why I didn't go forward fast expand. Just I, I think he may be losing his head a little bit. He might be a little bit aggravated about the last match because he knows he's a superior uh, micro wing player. Perhaps he's gonna be more be more aggressive and keep him from getting that third base down because without res without the superior resources, uh, Topez he, he's nothing. Yeah, I mean it's it's I mean, I guess. I mean, I mean, I get. He doesn't know the spawn locations, and he doesn't know it's cross spawn on Fighting Spirit. Now, Fighting Spirit's a giant. Well, he does map. seem to be scouting out. Uh, yeah, you know, he he is. But I mean, at the same time, we're seeing a blind expand. Now, this actually isn't looking terrible because if he's going, yeah, he's going probably two gate, uh, um, two gate into expand with a dragoon pressure. It's probably what we're going to be seeing out of Wallace here. But the problem is. It's cross spawn, so I'm interested if this expansion's actually going to work out. Now it, it looks, looks like, like he's, he just discovered the expand, or is about to discover. The yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is actually probably going to be good for Wallace if he's able to uh, deny this, which is probably what this build for. That should be another pylon or gateway coming down to, and he's even getting that first initial zealot, which oftentimes uh, identifies early game aggression. But he does get the gas steal, and now. In an area where this is, where you go a gas steal, like I'm, like I've been saying, you normally go a two gate. Now, where this is actually going for goon pressure, which is a little bit different. But I mean, goons can kite uh, marines all day as long as they're not on bunkers. And all, all, all uh, what Tobes can do here, if you didn't know, is they put down a bunker here, which this is looking a lot like a, a one bear, a one barracks fast expand, except the factory isn't isn't out quite yet. But it seems like he's sort of. Sending all of his SCVs to take out this one probe. Uh, it's actually no, oh, no I, I, I am incorrect. He's it's sending. actually in response because one, he's he, this uh, Zell's gonna be in here, making it really annoying it's, to put up this bunker. That could do quite a bit of damage too. Yeah, it it actually could potentially make just make this really really annoying oh, no, to put up this bunker. So if he can use his SCVs just to take the damage, yeah, yeah, yeah. Could slay it. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what he's gonna be doing, and oh. he should be able to survive with power micro, and he should be able to get that guy in the bunker. And I uh, really shouldn't be able to do too much. I'm just going to be stalling. He just got to him. send the Zealot to attack the Marine. Or to, oh, no. If he had sent that Zealot just to attack the bunker itself, he probably could have done more damage than just trying to run around. Well, he was place. actually trying to attack the Marine, and it's just the AI blocking, and that's just that what he's It's good micro and I'm surprised to see that from Topaz, because quite frankly, he didn't show that kind of ability uh, last time. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's interesting. I don't, I don't agree with this follow-up, but... Uh, he tried. He he win a build that would have potentially done damage against his fast expand. But now he's going early cyber core, which I'm not quite sure. I I believe that might be just tech switching into quick support bay. Which I mean, he's gonna get observatory obviously, but I'm wondering if he's gonna get down to robo support bay because that's probably to follow that up with that, some kind of reaper harass. But I don't know. I just. I feel like that's just too much committing when you should just really take your expand. I, mean, I don't think Wallace even knows what he's doing, quite frankly. I think Wallace. he's just, well, I think, he, yeah, the, the Protoss. I don't think he knows what he's doing right now because I think he's just preparing for a work because he doesn't know what, um, what, you know, Topaz could be planning because 
he does not have that sort of instinct to actually find out what he's up against, which was his undoing in the last game. Well, now, I wouldn't agree. I wouldn't go as far to say that. I mean, the, the he knows he's one basing a lot, and against a Terran, that's never a good thing. In TVP, you really shouldn't be especially going. Especially when playing as the Protoss, who have such expensive units, quality but expensive. Yes, and the, I mean, yeah, you're even seeing you're seeing the Reaver coming out right here. He sees the shuttle. He's gonna be well prepared for this, and this is. I, he just didn't have he didn't he didn't have dragooned at the front door now and somehow this scouting SCV he got in. I he's being incorrectly aggressive. He's sending all of his troops out to fight one bunker that he does just he doesn't need. If he could just get one to harass it and save the rest as a defensive mechanism, he could do some serious damage. Well, because he, think about it. If he just has one dragoon constantly bombarding that thing, even if the SCVs repair it, he's still attacking it. So well, they have to constantly repair it. The, the idea behind this is that you're having three dragoons, which requires three SCVs, which means they're constantly repairing it, which means he's losing minerals, which means he's losing mine time with three SCVs. That is that's, true. That's, that's, that's the reason why he's doing this. Now, he, did, now he doesn't want to overextend himself by, by like, have uh, those five sea chains and they all blow up each and no one those are coming out. But this isn't bad. This is what happens oftentimes in early game oh, TVP. But here's a tip. Here's a tip. It actually looks like my bunker might go down because he didn't repair it and he did get that. Just and that's a nice little dragoons. It looks like he's drawing him in. Yeah, and well, not a wise decision by the siege tank. Why has he not done the siege? I don't know why he's pushing up this ramp. This is not the correct judgment coming out of walls right here. This is just not gonna be a smart move right he's here. The tank's on his plan. Even if the plan is not perfect because he doesn't have the siege mode, it will still slaughter these dragoons. Whether or not they did enough damage I to make it worth it, I do not know. Yeah, he has siege mode. Um, he doesn't see. And he has a reaver in here. Uh, and I mean, I guess. Somehow, Why did he send the Dragoon to attack the siege tank? Why wouldn't he just send it to retreat, save as much as he can? Because he does not have the resources. He needs to snipe off that sh that Reaver, but why is he not? If that Reaver gets sniped, though, that might just be game. Oh, and he did get sniped off. Why would he let that happen? I don't. I don't know. I think he was just. He was just way too aggressive. He wanted to take out. Uh, he wanted to get an advantage over siege tank, but as soon as he saw that missile. Um, Turret. Yeah, no. Card, he should have just retreated. And now he has no air defense, which is his major advantage against siege tanks, because the siege tanks will wipe out anything he has except for air defense. No, but this is this is this is the really big problem coming out of Wild here. He went for a two gate pressure. That's kind of aggressive. Then he followed up with Reaver Harass. That didn't work. And then he's going into DT tech. Like I said, he does not know what he's doing. He's just preparing for everything. He's which is a problem. It's a late game strategy. And this is not going I mean this now, is not going in favor right now. Topaz of, is a fairly late game player, as we saw last time, but yeah. it's what his strategy is playing for a much later game than when Topaz. So by the time he's finished with his strategy, Topaz will be in his base, destroying everything. I mean, the only the the, 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 the difference from last game is that, I mean... The difference from last game is that an attack can come from any direction. Yeah, Fighting Spirits is a much, much more bunkered air. Like, you can bunker in so much more as Terran here. And just going for the super aggressive playstyle. Okay, now make him put on the back foot. Make him get a lot more tanks. Make him like make him put turtle him on up. The defensive. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. That's fine. Like I've seen players do that, and then all of a sudden they take five expands. That's fine. But take those five expands. Don't go fast temple or archives off of it's one a, base. It's a half fast strategy. He's just he just wants to make. I think the problem with him is that he's a great microwing player. However, he doesn't want, he's not a good defensive Mike Queen player. Like, let's say he sends half of his siege tanks to a tor destroy one base, and then half, let's say Topaz sends half of his siege tanks to destroy one base, and then half to destroy another. Now, let's say he, that Wallace had another base. He does not want to defend two at once, so he wants to just make one big one to defend easily, which is a problem because you just do not have the resources at one base, and when you run out, you have to start all over with a new expand, and those are very risky, especially with limited resources. So it's it's a very risky strategy, and his expands are far too late to defend. That's that was the problem with his uh, his twelve o'clock last game, or it wasn't like twelve o'clock; it was an up top expand. But the siege tanks wiped it out easily because he had no defensive. Yeah, and I was just looking at this gateway count right here. And he's off a of four, and it's just, it's, he has a four gate, and while I'm saying this, he has a lot of tanks, and he's, I mean, the, again, what we're seeing coming out of uh, Topaz here, he's just not really, like, careful of spreading his tanks out right now. He's just not microing properly. But, he's good at microing. Well, no, no, he's doing scale. it fine, but if there was an Arbiter out, fast Arbiter, that would have looked a lot different, but, I mean, 
I'm not quite sure if well, if, if Tobeth knows about that protest as I'm a second base right here. But now DTs are coming out. It's sort of like an illusion. He makes him think there's a second base down there, so he wants to destroy it. So he's going to send out more troops. Now, why he would want that, I don't know. And, you know, in a way, I don't really get how... Wallace is some, I mean, not Wallace, I mean, Ta uh, Tobez is, I mean, off a of two base, he's traded armies both games at the early art start stages of the game here. Aditi's out, but there's gonna be spider mines everywhere, there's turrets everywhere. What's the point? Like, why would you attack a turtling tower? It doesn't make sense. It, it, it literally doesn't make any sense. Sure, make him turtle, but don't attack him. The whole point is that the best, in this game, the best defense is a good offense. Because if he threatens him, makes him turtle, he cannot do anything. That gives him time to expand, which is what he needs to do. He does not have the resources to survive in this game unless he expands. And as we see now, he only has one, you know, vulture in there. But still, the fact that it was that easy to get into his main and that his main has so few defenses, it's just, it's quite pathetic. Yeah, and this is where Terran's gonna want to take his third base right here. And this is just gonna look... Really bad. And, you know, the the other downside of taking a one base play is not to say that you don't want saturation on your main base per se, but I mean, if you get in the mid and late stages of the game where it's harder and harder to take expands because you know players are more active with their units, they don't have to macro as efficiently because they're maxed out. Well, it does look like he's taking an expand, but it is a tad bit late to do that. I mean, not, look, he's got an army outside of his front door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just. And he won't be able to expand in that direction, I can tell you that. Unless he has an observer, but even still, he, ha he is greatly delaying with all those spider mines. And it's it's just, it's a mess, you know. It's I think it's just Wallace does not either wants to be concerned with economy or wants to be concerned with combat. And right now it seems that he's concerned with combat, much more than economy. He 63 is... to 111. I mean, we're seeing 50 supply deficit right here. Look how look at the mini map. Just look how it's much just... look how much stuff. It... He's bringing SCVs over. He's just going. He wants for to it. wipe them out completely, and he's just going to keep him, force him into. He's going to force him into, essentially, just to turtle himself. And as a Protoss turtling, not as effective as a Terran. I mean, even look at this. I mean, he's taking the he's ma he's taking the six o'clock like, right next to. Right next to Topaz's base here. I mean, uh, Wallace's base He's here. He's pushing up the line. And yeah. the thing is, Topaz, without an expand, that he should have... I mean, he has one expand, but... Look at, look at what? Or look at Topaz. He just has too many expands. Yeah, yeah, no. I, I mean, and then we're just seeing, like, the overwhelming force coming out of Topaz. Just Topaz's like last game, he yeah. just has the numbers. And yeah. it's like... You know, Wallace just does not have the resources. No matter how good of a general yeah. you are, tactically and microing, you just cannot... He can just send waves at you, and you won't be able to stop them. Yeah, that's the problem. That's exactly what's happening. And that's what's happening in both games. I mean, they traded armies. I think it's time to GG, because yeah. quite frankly, he is a shit streak. Yeah, and I mean, that's what we saw both games right here. We, we just saw, I mean, out macroing, and that's just how you win. I mean, there's see one G right there, but the main premise of what we saw here is that, sure, Wallace can go engage a, a tired army straight up, but the problem is... You can't reproduce your army after that. The Terran does, which is the flip side of what you want in TV. Now, what do you think was his greatest flaw in this game? I think, personally, it was the lack of expand. Because he expanded way too much. It, 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 yes. it, it, it was the lack of expand because he couldn't... Yeah, Wallace isn't a bad player. He's... I mean... Topaz isn't the greatest for engage engagements. I mean, those tanks were way out in the open. He had no vultures for that attack, and he probably should have sieged up in the back of his base when he was attacking on that, if you recall, from the ramp battle yes. uh, for the, around 10 minutes, I think. Well, I feel like Wallace would be a very good... I think if you took Wallace and you took Topaz, yeah. and then you had Topaz do nothing but economy, and Wallace do nothing but military, and then have Topaz constantly trade minerals to Wallace, you'd have a deadly force, because Wallace is a phenomenal general, can work great with very little resources, but he just cannot get the resources he needs. Topaz is a very good macro player. Now, if you took Wallace's ability to micro and Topaz's ability to macro, you'd have quite a decisive fighting force. Yeah, and the, the problem is that we saw, like I was saying, is that Topaz isn't the greatest micro or best engagement person, which is something that he needs to improve on. But Wallace is kind of, you know, slightly the opposite, where his his macro isn't... He's super aggressive, and that's the problem. He relies mostly on his skill. I think he has a bit of an ego. He just relies entirely on... Well, he does. Yeah. He relies on his ability to micro and his aggressiveness. Yeah, and it's, that's not his that's necessarily a bad problem for the early, early stages of the game. I mean, like, sure, like, maybe following up with the two-gate, maybe going to reaver harass, those fail. 
that's okay. I mean, like, that. I wouldn't agree with that play style, but it, it can work when you break your opponent with just non-stop aggression. But the problem is, after that, after you, like, once you tech up to, like, one, like, tech tree that has nothing to do with your regular late-game tech, then just stall. I mean, you don't need, you don't need to go, like, five-minute Robo, and then all of a sudden you go seven-minute Templar Archives when a DT did nothing. I mean, think about it. If, if you don't know, I mean, like, you get stormed late game, so you don't even need your Templar Archives up to that point anyway. I mean, yeah, eventually you could go into Arbiter Tech, which requires that, but you're not gonna... If you're one base and you need that second base to get Arbiter Tech anyway, so there's actually literally no point to get that Templar Archives for any you could have just made this a lot simpler and, you know, just chosen a strategy and gone with it. If you had just gone Reaver Harass, go with Reaver Harass. The problem, I think, aside from no expand, was that he did not have a decisive strategy. He was sort of d uh, dipping his finger in a lot of different dishes. Yeah, you just, can't be undecisive. He did not commit to a 4-gate, he did not commit to a Reaver Harass, he did not commit to anything. Which was his problem because his enemy definitely committed. He committed to Siege Tank and Vultures and that just wiped him out. He should have yeah. countered and he has seen this before, he has fought him before. He knows he is going to fight with Sieger. Siege and Vultures. Now he needs to figure out how to counter that. Which is standard TVP, which is Zealot, Dragoon, uh, Templar, and, um, and yet, Arbiter. Arbiter. <laughs> and yet he just fails to do this. Yeah, I, I mean, some players, I mean, I could say from my personal experience, I mean, I'm a really bad macro player. I mean, you can even tell with my StarCraft 2 games and Brutal games. And I two racks a lot. I, I go for a super aggressive, and if that doesn't work, I try to... Then I go, I sit back, and then I try to build up another army, and then just go and all in. My entire strategy, since I usually play RTSs that are later game, I'm an entirely macro player. I have no microing ability whatsoever, which has been my downfall since in every single <laughs> one of my games. So that's that's the issue, and I think if both players collaborated, maybe that might help them. But like anyway. a symbiotic relationship, yeah. one protects the expands. Maybe a good two v two team. That's what they would be good at. Exactly. Maybe a good two v two. But uh, thanks guys for watching, and that means. <laughs> B, uh, Black Dragons did win, win Series 5, which concludes this series. We're going on to, um, I forget what series we're doing next, but uh, we should have Amir back here with us. Because uh, that'll be a lot of fun. I would be here. Thanks guys for watching. Peace.